have here is a 1998 Winnebago Chieftain, but there's an awful lot wrong with this one. You can kind of see the tape right up there. They coated it with a roll-on coating. A broken skylight over here. Why they put screws right here into the roof. Let me go down below. A lot of uh, staining and damage right here. Like this entire ceiling panel is rotten. That's like it's called out. I'm gonna use some turnip on tape here. This is so rotten underneath it. And you can see how rotten that was and how it wasn't doing anything anyways. There's a little bit of a water leak right about no. there. So yeah, it's still wet right here. <sighs> very wet. But yeah, this roof is in very, very bad repair. Might be the worst one I've seen yet. Normally this would all come off in long channels because it's broken in so many places that I need to give it a little bit more strength than just uh that's a lot of water that's been getting in this coach. And the craziest repair I've ever seen in my life as an RV tech. Well, it looks like they used like some sort of a uh, construction adhesive when they rebuilt this side. So it's very hard, not pliable, and it's gumming up this entire track. And uh, I don't appreciate that they did this. This is such extra work. Don't use that. I only suggest that if you don't know how to fix a Winnebago roof, don't just try to do a band-aid repair because uh, you're causing me a lot of extra work. Now my wire brush method is not a method I normally have to take on these. But I got it filled to the brim with construction adhesive and sealant. All right, so I cleaned off that side pretty well. Chad's over there working on that roof. If you haven't seen any of the other Winnebago roof rebuilds, there's a pretty good indication of the cross section of it. I know you'll say there's framing right there, but that's the only framing and that's in Winnebago's steel safety cage area. After that, there's no uh, steel framing other than uh, those little bit of uh, sheet metal uh, ribs right there. But you can see the blue on, Foam, and then of course we're going to put Luon and Phylon back on top, and I don't know if you guys can see, it's a very wavy roof, so that's why I'm going to have to uh, see about restructuring this, and that's why I'm ripping those pieces of metal out, because they're all bent and disformed anyways. Right here you can see the uh, steel uh, safety cage that the windshields are glued into, often on a Winnebago, this is very, very rusty. This one's held up really well since it's a 98, I don't know if they're... Uh, powder coating was better in 98 because it's definitely got very bad in recent years. You can see all the water damage that's been happening over the years. The ceiling's rotten there. Uh, this right here is collapsed. This sidewall right here is collapsed. A lot of my uh, ladybug friends are still existing, but this whole sidewall is still soft and wet because it's just been having water pouring in on it. Which makes sense because you had water on the dash right there. <sighs> Let me just cl finish cleaning up. I'll do the other side and I'll start to repair the roof before I relaminate. And since I'm already here, I can see, still, <clears throat> I can see the steel right there. It means I can mark on the sidewall. So I'm gonna drill holes to the front cap to secure the front cap to the actual steel frame in there so often these uh, front caps like to cup out because it's just fiberglass and the adhesive doesn't stick long enough in the heat so now I know where to put the screws in the future right about there there and there and then I can just translate that to the uh, driver's side well, it looks like we had a tree growing on this side or something uh, maybe just a lot of grass growing in there One more side. And this is the uh, sheet metal brace. I call it a rib. Uh, 
it's important to know that this is not load bearing whatsoever. You can see how easily it bends. And it's just spot red welded right there. Its main purpose is to keep the uh, side walls from expanding at the factory. But because it's deformed, once I go to laminate this and it's deformed so bad, this will actually be pushing up on the substrate. So I have to get rid of these that are really bad. And then of course that one, I don't know if you can see how rusted and thin it is. You gotta get that out of the way too because this area right there is very collapsed and deformed. But yeah, there's absolutely no strength to this thing at all. Uh, it does not support the weight. It's notched out right there because that's where the AC ducts are and that's why there's a big crack down the middle of that because when the roof gave out, that AC duct is uh, that thick of styrofoam. It doesn't support any weight. So. These are not that vital. I don't like taking them out unless they've been deformed. They're going to cause problems down the road. But luckily the back uh, bedroom area right here up to about the skylight isn't in bad shape. So I can start stabilizing the roof back here in the sun and start working my way forward. Now I am spreading out my weight on this uh, piece of OSB here, but you gotta be careful when you're just on the foam itself. You couldn't collapse it. Now all these channels that are in the foam create lots of nice weak points for the roof. And since this roof is already so weak, I need to uh, kind of glue it all together and add a little bit more strength to it. So I'll be using some expanding foam. Now there's really no rhyme or reason to uh, why I use this other than it's minimally expanding. I guess it is fire rated, but it's a really good adhesive too and I've had pretty uh, good luck with it. I'm just going to put it all in here and try to uh, bridge all these channels and make a little bit stronger roof. But of course that means I have to sculpt this after the fact once it all cures. But I got lots of work to do. Filling all of this down the way there. So I've pretty much foamed up most of the roof. But right here it's just deformed so much that I'm going to have to almost treat it like bodywork and fill that area. That way when I sand it it'll at least be somewhat flush because this can't be brought down and that really can't be brought up. It's just the deformation of the foam itself. Uh, all I have to do is finish this, let the foam set up and I'll trim and shape that. But I do want to add a brace right there and then on both sides of that opening because that's where the AC is and that's where the whole thing collapsed. It looks pretty good, but there's a two by four wall holding this whole thing up and I don't trust that the whole thing won't collapse down since that was the original problem. Once the uh, two by four wall is removed. They're done now laminating with the wood though. All right, so as Chad laminates his coach and my foam cures, I'm going to make some uh, braces right here to support the weight of the AC unit. It goes right there. So I'm just going to use this one by one, pretty thick walled square tube aluminum here. I'll cut out the foam, then I will bend it with an arch. Then I'll have it recess mounted onto here to help carry the load and then we'll glue it into place. I've made a few of these before. I'll just be using a tubing bender. It'll round the edges a little bit, but it turns out pretty well. I'm just gonna lay that in place. I got a marker right there to kind of lay out where it's gonna go. Where I'll be cutting out. So I made a profile of my tubing on my uh, soldering gun right there. I'll just cut this stuff out. It should be the right depth. Yeah, this will work really well. All right, well, we got some channels going there. Then we'll just finish up over there. I do have to notch out so the wires fit down a little bit more than the factory had them. Okay, so I have it notched out, hopefully set on the uh, ledger or the header there. 
Well, I just got the bender set up there again, and we'll put a little bit of an arc on it, and we'll do it twice, and we'll get them installed up there. This should be the last little bit of bend I have to put on this one. Alright, I got the two of them mocked up there. I just need to pull them back out. I'm going to glue underneath them to glue them into place and then I will screw them back down over there. And then I will use the clamps right there to hold everything together as it cures. And then I can go ahead and body work the rest of this foam because it's set up now. Let's go ahead and glue that in there. I just have to clamp in the middle. Looks pretty good. Now this will be able to hold the weight of the AC a little bit better and keep the uh, roof from collapsing from the weight of the AC. I didn't want to find out after I pull all the supports after the whole roof's laminated that it was going to collapse at the end. So these supports were not part of the original quote whatsoever. I was not expecting to have to do this. But now I should just be able to walk on these supports and those hold my roof my weight It'll be much better with all, all the glue is set up all right so while that sets up pretty much I'm down to uh, trimming this extra foam and then we'll just sand it flush all the way around then it'll be time to uh Finally laminate. Only two days behind from where I'm supposed to be. All this extra work. I'll just be using some 80 grit sandpaper on this ice on this oscillator. And then that should work pretty well too. Alright, well, I think I got the roof done or at least sculpted and stabilized so we can laminate it now. So I did manage to get those aluminum frames in the roof right there so I can walk on right there pretty well. That'll handle the load of the uh, AC. There's still a little bit of a low spot there and right there I'll try to fill as we laminate. And then there was a big crack the entire length of this AC duct right there. Has been stitched and glued back together so it's all one big monolith as far as the styrofoam roof is concerned. Now all these orange channels, that's where the wire runs would have been. This all becomes gluing surface too. So it will make the roof a little bit stronger when we laminate the foam to the Luon. Because if you were to total up all the square footage of uh, this orange channel, it probably would equal about four by eight or uh, 32 square feet. So it's a lot more gluing surface that we have now too. So now it's just gonna be time to laminate just like a normal Winnebago roof. This foam step is not a common step to have to do, but because the roof was compromised so badly, especially with that ceiling panel on the inside, I'm trying to do as much as I can to make sure that it's going down the road safely, along with the aluminum, aluminum tubing that I put in. Okay, so now the next step is to actually laminate this roof. Again, we'll be using Sabon 183 for the foam to wood, but I do have to put this metal back in again, so I have the metal for the ladder and then the metal for the rear cap. I'll just be gluing that down. And then I already marked where it's gonna go. There. Just 
apply some pressure to glue it down. All right, the rest of the metal. But at least this time when I put this down, I'll make sure that the uh, last holes are gonna actually grab onto something more than eight inch glue on, unlike Winnebago in 1998. So the good news is it's laying down pretty well. And the better news is that the foam is still fixed. So I think it's gonna go really well. I just had to have to add a little bit of foam right here so when I laminate it, it fills in that gap. And a little bit right there to help laminate it too, since there is a hump because this whole foam was definitely deformed quite a bit. And so this will fill the gap, but also laminates really well. It's very good adhesive. But I don't want to put too much on there because I don't want it to expand too much and cause uh, bulging. So, nearly done. All right, let's get this last piece put back down. All right, well, I'm gonna call this deck installed now. I just have to trim the edges up on each side. And then the next hard part, laying out the file on, gluing it down, setting stage for the last hard part, which is gonna be to cut the edges and tuck it in. So hopefully that part goes fine too. Let's get to there. Look at that, a new deck is on this 1998 Winnebago. Sure looks better to me. I just have to put the fiberglass on. It definitely feels a lot more solid now than it did when it came in. But you should be able to see one of the ribs I put in there and there. You can walk across to where the AC goes. Don't step in the AC, you can see the other ends right there and there. So it should carry the weight of the AC better now. And I think that's it. And I don't think I got all the glue on my hands either. So we got the new file on down. Now we're just gonna have to cut it to length and get it tucked back in and start putting this whole roof back together. A lot of people are gonna ask me, do I fix the ceiling inside? And I'm gonna tell you, nope, that was not part of the agreement. I was only asked to put a new roof on. I added the uh, ribs because if I have to stand behind it, I wanted to give it a fighting chance, come chance, because I didn't know it was gonna be in this bad a position, this bad a condition when it showed up here. I probably would not have accepted this job had I known it was as bad as it was. In fact, I tried not to.